So good morning, everyone, or well, I should say to those of you in the Americas, and I should say good afternoon to those of you in Europe, and to the rest of you, your workday is almost over. Thanks for being with us anyway. Uh, this is the second of five lightning talks, uh, where the talk is lightning fast and the illumination is intense. And my name is Martin Ramsey. I'm the managing director of the LAMP Learning Consortium. I'm going to be your moderator today. Um, each of our presenters will have five minutes to do their presentation. So presenters, I'll ask you to be ready as soon as the previous presenter finishes up. I'll introduce each presenter very briefly so that we don't take time away from what you have to tell us. And uh, if you want to know more about the presenters, the Open Imperio schedule has a nice biography of each one. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, presenters, when it is your turn, you can take the presenter privileges by clicking on your name and making yourself the presenter. And if you did send me slides in advance, you can step through those at your own pace. If you do want to share your screen, you can do that as well. Um, I will be keeping time. Uh, so if you see me hold up my alarm clock, this thing here, uh, that means that your time is just about up. And so you need to uh, begin to wrap it up. Um, uh, so with, without further ado, then, um, let's get started. Uh, first up is somebody who really needs no introduction. My good friend, Josh Wilson, he's Chief Operations Officer at, uh, at Longsight. Um, and I do have a I should have shown my little map here. I do have a, a, a picture of where we're going to be hearing from today. Josh is in Massachusetts, so the star on the left, but we're going to be go, going to the to France and to the Netherlands and to South Africa today. So we're going to be taking a grand tour of the world. So Josh, why don't you take it away, sir? All right, great. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, or good afternoon or, or good evening, depending upon where you actually are. Um, so I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to set my timer and we are going to go. All right. So I want, to, um, I want to take presenter and I want to share with you a very quick but deep dive into some new market data. So just as a little bit of context, Sakai licenses market data from a company in Toronto called Infotech. They're a Gartner competitor. And what they do is to... They, they assemble a, uh, a data set that is made up of reviews from expert reviewers of various products. So the, the education LMS space is one of the areas in which they maintain reviews. So currently there's a, there's a database of nearly a thousand reviews from uh, various LMS experts. So Sakai experts, Moodle experts, Canvas experts, Brightspace experts, et cetera. So, and I want to share with you some of the insights from that uh, from that that database, that data set. So, the key point to take away here is that Sakai experts view Sakai more positively than do experts in other LMSs view their LMS products. So, Sakai experts feel better about Sakai than Canvas experts feel about Canvas. Sakai experts feel more positively about Sakai than Brightspace experts feel about Brightspace, et cetera. So let me share with you a couple of different visualizations to make that case. And we'll, we'll dive in progressively as we go, depending upon how much time I have. So let's start with this market leadership quadrant. So this is what uh, Infotech calls the data quadrant. You can see on the left-hand side um, is uh, product features and satisfaction. On the uh, that's the y axis. On the x axis, you see vendor experience and capabilities. So, when you look in the upper right hand quadrant here, that is the leadership quadrant, and you can see where Sakai is in relationship to Canvas and Moodle and Brightspace and others. So, the version of the quadrant on the left is from 2019, the version on the quadrant from the right is from 2020, November of 2020. And as you can see, Sakai continues to move up and to the right. Matter of fact, we're actually off the charts in that 2020 quadrant. So it's it's a nice headline. As more and more reviews come into this database, Sakai's leadership position gets better and better. So let's take a look at a couple of different areas of, of market leadership. <clears throat> and it's important to note that we, we think about this kind of market data because it is a different way to view the state of the LMS marketplace rather than just percent adoption. Um, you know, we're, we're all very, very familiar with Phil Hill's squid chart and uh, the notion that Sakai is about, has about 3% adoption worldwide. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you that product quality is another lens to look at Sakai, you, that we can use to look at Sakai. So here are four of those measures. So 
We're going to look at breadth of features, online learning, gradebook, and student collaboration. These are four of the probably 12 or 15 feature, feature and vendor measures that, uh, that we tend to look at. So, and as you can see, these are head to head to head comparisons looking at Sakai versus Brightspace versus Canvas. And in all four of these areas, you see that Sakai is better regarded by our experts than competitors are by their experts. So in breadth of features, Sakai scores an 86, Brightspace a 78, Canvas a 77. Um, in online learning features, Sakai is at 88, Brightspace at 83, Canvas at 81. And Gradebook, a similar pattern in student collaboration features, a similar pattern. One of the things that I notice as I look at these is not only the fact that, that Sakai is leading the pack, but that uh, Sakai leads Brightspace, which then leads Canvas. So we tend to look at Canvas as the market leader. I'm not so sure that's, that's the right approach here. So with 54 seconds to go, let me make one further point. And uh, so this is a product feature summary that comes from the full uh, data quadrant report that you can download from a URL I'll show you in uh, just a few seconds here. And you see Sakai is at the top of the list. We have the highest overall score. Those green boxes denote a leader. And you can see if you look at this more carefully, and I'll post this in the, in the forum a little later on, that there are three things that you can see from in terms of Sakai's comparison with others. There are areas in which we beat the competition. Those were four of, this, of the areas that I, that I mentioned a minute ago. There are areas in which we are pretty much on par with the competition. And there are areas where we are not on par with the competition. And there really is only one of those. And really, it's only analytics. And even there, we're not far behind. So Brightspace, uh, Brightspace is at a 77. Whoop, there's my timer. Um, Canvas and Sakai are about the same level. So for those okay, who yeah, say Canvas, ha Canvas has better analytics, don't don't listen. The market data says otherwise. So thanks all. Let me uh, let me share this URL. This is where all the market data lives on Confluence. And I thank you very much for your time. And I have put that um, that that URL in the chat for people who want to look at that um, right away. Uh, so you can you can click on that and and see it. Okay, thank you, Josh. Um, I don't know if th this is new information for people, but that uh, to me that just that speaks volumes, and you did a great job of succinctly um, saying it. So, all right, um, I'm going to take back presenter control so that I can do my next thing here and uh, move on to uh, my new friend. And I had to ask how to pronounce her name. So, we dot Sukorti. <laughs> did I do that right? is going to take yes, over. And, and Thank you so much, Martin. Um, I don't want to take up too much time because I know that I have five minutes, but I'm actually struggling to share my screen. So I click on uh, the, the I'm tech make you present or You should be able to do it now. All right. Do you, you, you see the button on the right hand at the bottom? And um, the button on the right hand at the bottom where it says take action and be a presenter or uh, raise well, hand. Uh, no, um, sorry. Underneath the slides, uh, there should be a, a microphone for where you can go live. There should be a camera and there should be oh, a, another. Found it. All right. Thank you so much again. You're good. Um, all right. Let me know once my screen is visible. It's coming. Give it a second. Okay. All right. There we go. You, you got it. Go for it. All right. Hi, everyone. So we'll be talking about making an online postgraduate diploma accessible. Um, I'm joined with my colleague, Lauren Butler, and we're from the University of Cape Town. All right. So just to jump right into it, um, UDL. So I'll be telling you what UDL is in a nutshell so that you have an idea of what we are trying to achieve in the design of the postgraduate program that we worked on that is hosted on the Sakai-based LMS at our university. So very quickly, UDL is an education approach that provides flexibility in how information is presented, how students express their knowledge and skills, and how students engage in their learning. So the aim of UDL is really to build inclusivity and opportunity in learning and teaching environments as this framework acknowledges that students learn differently and have different learning needs. So there are three core principles that guide the design, engagement, 
which is really about providing opportunities for students to deepen their engagement and interest in the world through including an array of learning activities that are accessible and at the same time taking into account their different abilities, experiences and interests. Um, representation, it's about presenting information and enabling the acquisition of information and knowledge in different ways. And um, action and expression is about making space for student voice, participation, as well as differentiating the ways in which students can express what they know. So Lauren is just going to give you some brief context about um, this postgraduate diploma that we worked on. Thank you, Vidad. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Lauren. And to give you some context, this is a fully online program consisting of six courses that run over one year. And it's built on Vula, which as Vidad said, it's UCT's Sakai based system. And students for this course are based all over the world. Um, and all of them are full time health practitioners in the field of emergency medicine, such as nurses, paramedics, and doctors, and they have a diverse work, academic, and online learning experiences. So let's take you through the principle of multiple means of action and expression. So just an example of how we designed using the UDL principle of action and, and expression. So we made students aware that they can respond in various mediums, such as voice, diagrams rather than only text. So Sakai based tools such as the rich text editor is wonderful, but if students are not told or informed about the various features of that tool, it tends to limit their responses and may even exclude voices or views. Um, so as we progressed in the course, we found that students were exploring and getting very comfortable with the rich text editor. Um, in the text itself, they were exploring bolding and italicizing the text, resizing fonts and changing fonts and using emoticons. Um, so this all contributed to how their message of view was, convoy was conveyed. Um, Lauren? Okay. Thank you, Vidad. And the next principle is to provide multiple means of representation. Move on, Vidad. Thank you. And again, OK, thank you. And um, so this is an example of how we included a variety of readings and videos on a lessons page for students to be exposed um, via an embedded or a linked um, learning material for them. Next. <clears throat> and here um, I would like to show how we organized video materials. We linked it directly onto a lessons page. Um, where students can watch it. And we also added it to OpenCast, where students can access a variety of download options as well as the transcript. And when it was a narrated PowerPoint, we also linked the PowerPoint um, on the lesson page alongside the other material. Yeah, okay. but I, I would just add like transcripts are really important because um, students may not all be English first language speakers. And some may, might prefer like having the text rather than the video to study from. Okay, so the next principle, um, providing multiple means of engagement, um, how we did this in the course. How, sorry, I heard a technical sound. So how we've done this in the course, we um, we use sub pages to contain the engagement of different topics or scenarios. And through this approach, students could see and share their comments on specific topics within one space, and it became more focused in this way. And yep, that's us. <laughs> I think I missed an example, but I think we don't have much time. There we go. So this is just no, we another are out of time. <laughs> that's oh, fine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. It goes really fast. I know. I'm sorry about oh, that. Okay. <laughs> But it's it's a it, it's th that's a it's a really good way of looking at uh, the, this whole idea of of having making sure that you have multiple ways of accessing things. I, that's a that's a new parameter or paradigm for me. I like it. That's great. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. 
Um, all right, I'm going to take back con presenter controls and move on to our next one. Um, and so this is uh, another new friend, Tom Reiners. Or I sh I'm Tom. I'm working on getting the 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 R right. Is it Reiners? Um, but anyway, Tom is uh, he's also at uh, he's at uh, the, in the Netherlands, and he's going to talk about Project Xerti. So Tom, I'm going to give you control and let you take it away. Okay, thank you. I have presentation right, so I'll share my screen. Okay, there we are. Can you see my screen? We do indeed. Take okay. it away. Uh, well, I wanted to show you how LTI uh, and Zerti is um, uh, integrated in the new way. Uh, so that means there was an old way. So let me quickly show you the old way. Uh, yeah, the, well, this is the, the, for the people that don't know Zerti, this is the work area. Here are a lot of uh, learning objects and I can uh, set and all kinds of parameters and properties. And one of the properties is sharing with LTI and XAPI. And the old way was to uh, create a key and a secret uh, for each learning object uh, uh, uniquely. Um, and the biggest problem with that is that to be able to use those keys and secret in the LMS, uh, people needed to have admin rights, etc. And uh, this was hugely impractical uh, for because for each learning object, uh, an admin uh, needed to create an external tool. So that's what we tackled. If we look at the new way of doing it, and if we look at the new tab, uh, then uh, this is the most important new property, uh, user globally configured keys and secrets, including LTI 1.3. So in doing this, uh, um, I was we were also able uh, to enable uh, LTI 1.3 support. So the only thing I need to do is this as an author. And now uh, I can, if uh, the admin has set up LTI 1.3 one time between this installation and the LMS that the institution is using, uh, uh, the, as an author, you don't need to do anything else in Xerti. The only thing that is good to know is that you have a, a launch URL here displayed <clears throat> and it might be wise to copy it. Now, LTI 1.3 is a lot more complicated than LTI 1.1, and I try to have we tried to figure out a way of how to uh, um, uh, implement that. And the old way, uh, we took over a lot of uh, fields and and put them in the user interface of Xerti. But in the back end, uh, we are using the fabulous Tsuki tool of Dr. Chuck, and so uh, we thought, why not use the tool um, uh, fully? What we did is just incorporate the complete Tsuki tool in the Xerti install. It's not uh, available uh, in the install, so you need to install it separately, uh, but it's not uh, difficult to do. And once you've done that, uh, you can manage the access keys completely within the familiar Tsuki uh, admin console. Uh, so you can connect uh, LTI 1.3 issuers with, for example, a Moodle, uh, and once you've done that, uh, the, uh, all the learning objects that have this little flag toggled, and this one, are available to Moodle. So how does that work? Uh, in Moodle, I can create an extra tool. Uh, and I need to add this. This is my external tool that is set up once by the admin. I choose that. Uh, the, the only th oh, that's not what I want. I'll show more. It's just to have the tool URL, and this should be it. Well, this this um, is how it should work, and. 
The other thing that we also did and is new in the new uh, Zerti is that you can now uh, start uh, uh, the Bootstrap site template uh, through LTI as well. Uh, and the Bootstrap is uh, very often used to organize uh, the other Nottingham templates. And uh, a very big complaint was that uh, the Nottingham templates that were embedded in the Bootstrap were not tracked. Uh, by uh, making uh, the Bootstrap LTI launchable, uh, we know who the student is that uh, interacts with that uh, uh, Nottingham templates. Uh, and uh, we are now able to piggyback the whole LTI launching uh, through the Nottingham template. So this is a bit abstract if you don't know Xerti. If you want to know more on what we can do with the results and, 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 and a place how in, in dashboards, etc. Uh, and this is a demo effect. It, it just, <laughs> I checked it just now and somehow it doesn't work. Uh, I will show you a complete working example tomorrow and I will also show you the results in a dashboard. So basically, this is it for me. And your timing is perfect. My timer just went off. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much, Tom. This is this is really interesting. Uh, Josh and I have been texting saying we need to show this in Sakai. <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, next up and last in our in our short session today. Um, oops. I, Matilda, have you already grabbed the presenter rights? That's good. Um, so next up, we have uh, Matilda Giron from uh, La Rochelle University in France. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me today. Uh, before jumping right into it, I'd like to mention that all credits for this presentation should go to Emma and Vincent, who've done the hard work. Um, I'm just giving this talk because they were not really comfortable speaking in English to that much people, I guess. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, so this lightning talk is going to be about one of our projects called SUPOTP, which is an open source multi-factor authentication provider for CAS. Um, here are the different topics that I will go through in this presentation. Um, but first, as you'd probably guessed, SUPOTP is an SUPOTI project, so I just wanted to remind you of what SUPOTI is just in case. So, SUP is a French consortium representing more than 80 member institutions, um, and our goal is to develop, promote, and support open source solutions for higher education. As you probably know, we've been working closely with the Perio for quite some time now, um, especially on projects like Hupol, CAS, OAE, and Keruta. So back to topic. Um, out of the box, the latest versions of CAS support different multi-factor authentication providers, um, as you can see here. But the thing is that um, most of them are neither open source nor self-hosted, and some are quite expensive with per user per month fees. So this is why we developed a SuperTP. Um, a SuperTP is a free alternative solutions, which is self-hosted and quite user-friendly. It lets administrators enable and disable MFA options at an um, institutional level. Users can choose the ones they want to use, and managers are able to assist users by uh, providing them an emergency access code in case they cannot access their smartphone, for example. Um, a SuperTP implements several methods for generating uh, single-use passwords, uh, SMS, time-based one-time password, mobile pulse push not notification, um, and some random code list, and uh, also NFC swipe and go. So I'm not going to go into too much details, but to sum it up, the project consists of three main components. A SuperTP API, which is a RESTful API to generate, send, and verify one-time codes. A SuperTP manager, um, which is pretty much the whole user interface, you know, where administrators administrator, sorry, can configure the platform and, and users can edit their authentication preferences, etc. And finally, uh, a SuperTP CAS, uh, which is the module that needs to be embedded to uh, in CAS to make the magic happen. And there's also uh, a SUP auth, which is the mobile application that is now available on the Play Store and will hopefully be in the um, App Store. It's currently being reviewed at the moment. 
So I'm just going to show you some screenshots um, to give you an idea of what it looks like in real life. So here is the user trying to authenticate with uh, a SuperTP and CAS version 6. Um, this is how you, a user, uh, may enroll device for push notification using the uh, SIP auth application that I mentioned earlier. Um, these are some randomly sorry, generated codes for backup, main mostly. And here is the manager's interface to help out people who can log in because they don't have access to their smartphone, you know, uh, because they lost it or it ran out of battery or whatever. And here is the administrator's uh, interface to enable and disable specific MFA options. So that's pretty much it. Um, I don't have much time left, I think, but I'd like to thank every single person who's worked on this project. Uh, those mentioned here, obviously, but also the ones that I forgot. If you're interested in learning more about the project, um, go take a look at our GitHub page or feel free to contact us at contact text at esup portalorg and um, yeah, so that's it. I'm done. Thank you all for your attention and bye-bye. Um, and I happen to know that uh, uh, Matilda was um, coming to us recorded, but she's online, so she's available to answer questions if you uh, have anything. That was that was actually quite clever, Matilda. That worked out well that you, <laughs> you looked live to me. So um, that is our last presentation. I see that there's some good... Um, chats going on, which is, which is excellent. That's that's really good. Um, and I, I want to thank all of our presenters. This has been a, a lot of fun and illuminating, and I just continue to be amazed by the, the community that uh, is Open Aperio and how, how global we are and how much we enjoy sharing with each other. This is really good. Um, before I go, uh, before I let you go, I, I want to say that there are a few slots left for a few more lightning talks. This would be tomorrow uh, in the last session. Um, now that you see how the format works, if you go, oh, I could present something that short, um, then why don't you do that? Uh, send, if you've got an idea, I'm going to put it in the chat where you can send your request. Um, just send it to that email address. Let them know that you would like to uh, present during the uh, lightning talks, the last one uh, tomorrow, and we'll we'll accommodate you. We'll be a part of it. I really want to thank everyone for being here. The, the next session is your software community solutions. I encourage you to go in and check that out. Um, and I unfortunately will not be seeing you later on this afternoon. I had a little personal emergency, so Josh is going to be taking over the moderator duties. But until then, um, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. But thank you very much, everyone, for being a part of this. It's, it's time to go on to your next session.